Hey, how's everybody doing today? Hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Um, we did start uh, in-person services again this past Sunday, and we will continue this week. We will have a 9.45 and an 11 o'clock service in person. And, of course, we will continue to be um, online at 11 o'clock. So hope you can join us this week. <clears throat> um, today I'm going to give you – I'm going to talk to you just real briefly about uh, out of Psalm 51 and – it's also going to kind of lead into a new sermon series that I'm starting this week. But um, let me just read the, uh, the passage I want to read to you. Psalm 51, um, it's one of the most famous psalms. It's about David's um, repentance after he's confronted with his sin of Bathsheba. Um, at the very end of this passage, it says in verse 16, I'm going to read 16 through 19, you do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O God. Look with favor on Zion and help her rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will again be sacrificed on your altar. You know, one of the, the, the sermon series is going to be about, um, you know, how to, how a simple life, you know, most of us would say that our lives are, are complicated in a lot of different ways. And the, the recipe for a, a simple life is having a simple faith. And we oftentimes try to make it more complicated than it really is. You know, David was in this place where he had, he had sinned, and now he's been confronted with his sin, and he's repenting of it. And then he comes to that place, he says, look, he says, you do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. In other words, you know, he recognized that doing a bunch of stuff was not going to fix what he had already done. And so many times in, the, in I think, as believers, we kind of get mixed up and we think, well, if I really want to, you know, be a follower of Jesus, I want to be right with God, then I got to do this, 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 and this. And what David says is, it's, it's not... Doing a bunch of stuff makes things better. As a matter of fact, he, here's what he says. Here's what God desires. He says, what God desires is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart. Now, that's not broken. You know, sometimes we think of broken as, as just crushed, as uh, downtrodden. But a broken spirit is just one that has been humbled under the obedient hand of God. And a repentant spirit is one that turns away from sins and turns to God's ways of doing things. Now, it doesn't mean that um, that we don't aren't called to do things as believers, because that passage, the next thing it says, it says, "Look, look with favor on Zion and help her rebuild the walls of Jerusalem." That's what a broken spirit and a repentant heart are. That is that is restoring the walls that protect you from the forces outside. He says, then you'll be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. In other words, <clears throat> once we're in that place where we're, we're right with God, we've, we've repented of our sins, we have uh, allowed our spirit to be humbled under his hand, then we do, we do things. We serve the Lord. We give because we do that out of a grateful heart. And, we, where we get off track is sometimes where we think that the things that we do can override or overwhelm the things that we've already done that were disobedience to him. And that's not how it works. God never says, well, okay, you did this, so now you go do that, and that'll make it right. It, it's really just simply humbling ourselves back under his hand again. It's a simple thing. It's not easy, but it's simple. And we try to make it more complicated by thinking, well, okay, you know, I messed up there, but if I do this, this, and this, then that'll kind of wipe that out. But that's really just a, a works-based salvation you're trying to live out instead of living by grace. Grace is simple. When you mess up, you repent. You turn to God. You ask forgiveness. And he takes away your sins. That's what grace is. He overlooks your sins because of the blood of Jesus and because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that's simple. 
it's hard for us to grasp because we, in our minds, always want things to be, you know, we want to pay our own way. We want to um, control our own destinies. We want to have, you know, be able to make things right on our own. But that's not how it works in our relationship with God. He's already done all the work. We just receive it by submitting our hearts to his and by being repentant. And it's just one of the ways that we, you know, can try to make things more complicated than they really are. And the thing about it is when you try and go do something right, to overcome something wrong, it can cause more problems than it fixes because you're not doing it with the right spirit and you're not doing it with the right heart. So we're going to talk about that in the weeks ahead and in our uh, message. And and I just want to remind you that, you know, Jesus already paid the penalty for your sins. There's nothing you can do to make it right. There's nothing you can do to um, overcome the the wrongs that you've committed. You just have to to trust that Jesus already did that. So I hope you guys will have a great week. Hope to see you Sunday. And uh, uh, God bless.